All right, sustainabilityists and engineers, let's jump back into this GIS Lab 4 from the GIS 6100 course that my wife Nas is taking. And when we last left off, we were looking at the data and elevation map, and we had these different land types from roughly five or six years apart. So we were looking at 1996, where the gray is the urban areas, and then seeing it increase by 2001 and seeing it increase further by 2006 and then increasing more by 2010. Um, it would be nice to do a time series animation. Maybe we could get into that, but the instructions are fairly clear to follow. So let's go in and find the instructions. There they are. And what it's telling us is to edit the attribute table we did put a base map in. They suggested using an imagery. I like the imagery with labels, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, uncheck the list, select them in the contents pane, swipe between them uh, to observe their difference. So I guess swiping, I never thought of swiping. Does that mean that you can go like this? Or what do I mean by swipe? I know you can turn this on. Let me see if I if I'm missing something in the instructions when it says to swipe. So it's telling us change detection using the swipe tool. I've never used the swipe tool. That's pretty cool. All right, so we have the data, and then there's this thing called the swipe tool under appearance, I guess. And then you can uncheck some of them and move your mouse in the map view comes triangle area, click down on the left key to drag the arrow to different directions, and it'll swipe between 96 and 2010 to see these changes. The selected layer must be placed on the top in the contents pane and is visible. Swipe tool swipes between the selected layer and the first visible layer beneath it. So you rearrange them to see stuff. Okay, well that could be interesting. So now you can use the swipe between this and the remote sensing image. Sure, absolutely. So if we go to here and we find this alleged swipe layer, which is under, is under view, is that where the swipe is? See how my brain completely loses? I think it's our project. No, it can't be under project. So that does not do anything. So swipe, where the heck is swipe? Let me go back to here. And why didn't I, thought I paid attention to it, but it is their swipe. It's on project. Huh. Click to activate the swipe tool in the appearances tab. Okay, appearances. Well, that's what does it. So let's look at the appearances tab, except we don't have an appearances tab, do we? So that's a problem. No appearances tab. Not under data not under share, not under imagery, not under view. I see an appearances tab. Do you see that? See anything that says appearances? I don't. Analysis, I don't see any appearances tab. Insert and map. Uh, measure, coordinate, download map. I ain't not seeing any appearances tab. So there's this navigate tool. That don't help use bad English. All right, let me go to um, chat GPT, as I often do when this happens, and let me ask, hey chat, where is the appearances tab in ArcGIS Pro? It isn't showing up for me. And then what does chat tell me? The appearance tab might not be showing because it's context sensitive. It only appears when a layer is selected that supports visual changes. Select the correct layer in the contents pane. When you click on that layer, it activates the tools. Check the ribbon at the top, and it should be in the feature layer or raster layer. We'll try that first. Maybe that's what I did wrong. I was selecting, I guess I have this open and I have the base map. Let me try Luke um, 96 along with Luke. 10. Well, that's what they wanted. I've selected this layer, and I still don't see anything with this layer 
selected. And so that didn't work. So what's the next thing Mark, uh, chat tells me? Chat tells me that I should click on the layer name and the contents pane. So the contents pane, this is the contents pane and I've clicked on the layer name for sure. Symbology shouldn't have anything to do with that, but I am clicking on the layer's name and it's not showing up. So the next thing it tells me, you're going to do a lot of this troubleshooting when you're working with this. Check the ribbon. should be in the ribbon under the feature layer or raster layer. So I'm using a feature layer, I do believe. But there's a raster. Okay, it's a raster layer. So here's raster layer. There's swipe. Okay, so there's no appearances tab. Huh. It's under raster layer, but nothing there. So hit swipe, and then swipe down and you can ah i see what they mean so you can go here look at how the city has grown this little area here has gotten bigger and bigger over time so that's what they mean by swipe okay so you could do that between this layer and this layer and here i guess what i did wrong in i could use a different gray in this one down here. So let me open up the symbology of this and because that's sort of misleading if the gray is that different. So I think we're at this gray. So if I was doing the 2006 data and swiping with the 2010, then I would need to turn that off and it should be letting me do this layer and swiping to that other layer. Yeah, so you can see the urbanization taking place. Go zoom in a bit and really see how urbanization has just taken over, along with some uh, barren land. There's barren land over here. So that's the swipe thing. Okay, that's pretty cool. And then they make the suggestion that you say, take a look at 2000. Uh, I'm sorry, 1996, turn off this layer, turn off this layer, and just have the world imagery layer, and we should be able to see. Oh, I can't see it. Is that because I haven't selected it? Ah, yes, I haven't selected anything here. So looking at 1996 and selecting that layer, now you can see how much of a difference there is. Hard to tell though with this, this difference here, this urbanization. A little bit easier to use this 96 and compare it with 2010 and let that be what you see as the, as the difference. All right, so that's the swipe tool and it's under the raster layer. It's not under appearances. So ha ha on that. Moving on. <clears throat> we are now at the, having looked at that, having looked at this, you can swipe uh, remote sensing image, okay, and we do that, and yeah, it's nice. Observe their difference. They use it, LULC raster is usually classified from a raw remote sensing image. That's how they used it, so that's fun. Now, before moving to the next step, go to the appearance steps and deactivate the swipe tool. Well, I cannot go to the appearances tab because there isn't one, but I can deactivate the tool, or can I? Maybe I can't. Darn. It won't, uh, it won't deactivate. Why is that? Hmm. Right. Can't deactivate it. Minimize this ribbon. If I go to click, no, flicker, flicker, just, oh, look at that. Flicker does this between the layers that you're activating when you hit flicker. So it's showing you land change. So you have swipe and you've got flicker. I don't know why swipe won't turn off. That's a pain in it. He says to get rid of it, and then uh, you can't get rid of it. It doesn't even turn off when I unclick it. There's no way to turn off the darn 
swipe. So you're always going to have these problems with computer programs, and it'll drive you absolutely nuts, right? So you keep going around there, and you say, okay, great, I got RASP. And I got Raspberry layer and swipe is still on. <sighs> yeah, okay. Love it. I'm going to ask chat because that does disturb me. And say, hey, chat. Turns out there is no appearances tab in the new Arc GIS. Pro, but it was, but the swipe feature is there under caster. It works along with Flickr, but I can't turn swipe off. Any idea why? What was it tell me? Is under Vaster tab, sometimes can be turned off a bit confusing. And if you can't turn off the swipe tool, there's a few things. Deactivate it, click on the map tab in the ribbon to reset the tools. Once you're back in the map tab, you should deactivate any tools. Select a different tool. Yeah, it didn't work there. Choose and reopen the project. Yeah, of course. Click check the active tool. Make sure it's not locked as in the in as the active tool. You can see by checking the status bar. Keep hand or identify. Turn off the raster layer tab. After layer tab and look for swipe tool settings. Minor quirks. Well, I don't think that I didn't think I tried that. I tried to go to map, thought that was going to reset it, and when you go to raster layer, it's still on. Um, this is a time then to save, and let's see if we reopen the open the recent what. Open land use for. Of course, it's already open, so how do you close it? I don't want to exit the program just for that. But swipe is certainly stuck. And uh, flicker is, like I said, it's just going to do the flicker, and you can change the milliseconds that it flickers, which is super fun, but I can't seem to get that turned off. Pain. Pain in the butt. Okay, well, we're going to work without taking it off. I don't know. He says not to, and it'll automatically open it if it causes problems. So, editing the attribute table. The numerical values of pixels are hard to read. You can add a new text field in the attribute table to store land cover types for different pixels. I already did that. Oh, I did that early on. That's in my first video, part one of this. So, I did that without reading this. So I did create a thing. I called it land type. He calls it land cover. I made it text. Okay, so we've got that. And then I selected it. And then the attribute tables, pixel count and meaningful units. So we want to add a new field called area kilometers in float type. All right. So we did that. So now in each LLU set, let me communicate when I cover it. So right click on the header of the area kilometer field and click calculate field. So where's the header of that? So if we go to this and we look at in the attribute table, we have value count and land type. We don't have an area kilometer thing. So that doesn't work yet. So the attribute table tells the number of pixels count for each thing. Okay, we can convert pixel counts. So you need to add a new field. Okay, so add a new field in each raster. So you have to add it. It doesn't explicitly say that. But yeah, you go add field like this, same way we did the land cover field, and then call this area underscore kilometer. And he said to make it a float type. So it has decimals. And once we have that, we can save it. And there's the area kilometer. And now we have to do a field calculation. So they're saying to right click on the header and click calculate field. Double click count in the fields list 
and then add multiply sign. So you're going count and then multiply and then add a number. 30 meters is the pixel size because that's the digital elevation map resolution. What number should you put after it? And they're asking a question for one point. Pixel size is 30 meters. I'm supposed to know this, right? Put pixel count. So 30 meters is that, and you want to get to a kilometer, then you multiply by 1,000 divided by 30. So calculator, and so 1,000 kilometers divided by 30 would be 33.3. I hope I'm right. My math skills have never been great, but um, a kilometer, let's see, a kilometer is not thousand by a thousand, but then this is 30 and that's square meters for the pixel and we've got to multiply it by what would be a thousand, I guess, for a kilometer, I hope. So we'll just go in here and right click on this and say to do the calculate field and then tell it that we want to count Count would be the new field name existing is the count, and then the count equals the expression is ah, please, this is what we want to do. Put this into area kilometers. I think that's what they're going to say. Let's look at it again. Yeah, area kilometers, and then it's count times 33.3 if I'm doing it right. count times times 33.3 hit apply and then indent it lower arrow what did I do wrong file expression line one indentation area really I indented I don't need to indent what about that no that's not good either so what did I do wrong? Area kilometer, insert values, is count. Times insert values. Or maybe that's what I had to do. Double click on count so it came in. But I thought that, no, it can't be that. It's got to be double click on count and then say times and then say 33.3. Now, hi. There we go. Alrighty. So there's the area in kilometers. And I don't know if that worked or not. If I have these numbers are correct or not. But that's what they want us to do. And the next thing is create a bar chart to analyze land use and land cover. Okay. Click on create chart. Bar card. So we can select loop 96 and set the parameters as follows. If I could even see that. Okay, it's land cover. So yeah, that's the expression that we wanted. I should have clicked on count and then multiplied and then added my number. All right. <laughs> You know what, and this is where it gets fun too. Um, question one, given the pixel size of 30 meters expression, I think what would be really fun is to say, take this here. This is how I check my work. Go into chat and always see what chat can do for you. And say, hey chat. Here is a question we must answer. And I put this in there, and then we come back and find the rest of the question. All right. And let's see if we get the same result when we check our answers.
calculate each pixel. So it's 30 meters by 30 meters. So one pixel is 30 is 900 square meters. Since there are 1,000 square meters, you would say, oh, 0 0.0009. OK, I really messed that up. Calculate the area of a single pixel in square meters. Area of one pixel equals 30 meters times 30 meters is 900 square meters. Convert square meters to square kilometers. And you, if it's 900 over that, it's 0 0.009. Boy, did I mess that up. I'm going to tell it now. Let's say, ha, ah, I multiplied by 33.3, thinking that I needed to make it a kilometer. So why is my reasoning so messed up? Let's see what it tells me. <clears throat> oh, I'm not alone. Isn't that nice? Linear distances. Dealing with areas are in different dimensions. Square units, converting square minutes, square kilometers requires you divide by a thousand, so it's a thousand meters in each direction. Scaling is a conceptual difference. One dimension area conversion, I think in two dimensions. Thinking in pixels, it's easy to confuse the process when you think about how pixels relate to the real world and converting pixel counts to areas. The key is to think about area each bit, not just its width. Pencil math shortcuts. Multiply my three degree when comes to the diagonal to the bridge of gap between meters and kilometers without fully converting the area. Common trap when we're rushing or mixing up our unit conversions. Remember the dimensional difference. Always remind yourself when dealing with linear 1D area or volume. Check, double check units, take down the problem. Okay, thank you for saying it happens to the best of us. I'm really a mess here. So I'm going to add multiply by this then and recalculate my field. And so that means that I'm going to once again calculate field and tell it to do this and say count. And it's not times 33.3. It is 0 0.09 and apply it. And that's much better in area square kilometers. All right, that was nice. Now we're going to get to this fun part of creating a chart. So to create a chart, we are going to go to create chart bar chart. I don't even know where create chart bar chart is, but we can try it. So if we click on this, can we do create chart? Yeah, it happens right here. Create chart bar chart. And we don't have anything in it yet, so the category is probably going to be an account. Let's find out what they want. Land cover, and then sum. Okay, land cover sum. Land cover, or land type in my case, and not count, but sum. Select variables in chart properties pane. Chart properties variables. Split by. Okay, so what is the split by that he wants us to do? He is doing select area kilometers. There we go. So most of this is wetland and then there's agriculture and then urban. I guess this way we can compare uh, how these things change. So that's pretty fun. So I guess we're going to probably do it for all of them and see how these dimensions have changed. He's got, for 1996, he's got 2-3-A-1-8 for the wetland. I wonder if I have the same thing. We don't have any numbers on here. Okay, label bars. Yep. 231.8. So obviously that number that ChatGPT gave us, uh, multiplying by 0 0.00009, is the right thing because that is the exact figures that he had. Oh, this is 560 here for agriculture. Something I must be doing wrong. I got 56. And he got 231 point that. And this one is using 2,318. So I seems like I put a decimal, maybe chat QBT messed up a, a decimal place for me. 
because that is wrong. It should be a comma there. Is that a comma? Hard for me to tell what that is. 84.231 for wetland. And here he's got 2,318. So chat was off. So I'm going to have to recalculate my field. Uh, once again, go to calculate field and tell this count to be count and maybe remove one of these. Now we have 2,318. So yeah, chat was off. I think that's something I got to tell it. Um, I want to go back and tell chat because here 2,318 is what it should be when we look at the chart now. There's 2,318. This is 560. And that is what 560, 2,318. All those values are right. So let me go back and tell chat. Um, say, excuse me, chat. Chat. The, uh, the tutorial sheet suggests that the number should be that. Calculate one area, 900 square meters. Should indeed be 0 0.009, no. Quite a bit, six layers, 9,000 square meters. Oh, maybe the tutorial's wrong. So Chad is insisting that it got it right and we got it wrong. That would be fascinating if it turns out that it's the tutorial that is wrong and not chat. But we'll go with the tutorial because professors are more likely to give you points if you do what they do and don't argue. Okay, so use the same approach for 10. Take screenshots and put it in. I will do it for all of them. It doesn't hurt, does it? So let's go in and Let's do the same thing for this one and open the attribute table. Oh, I can hit the close this. I'll keep that open. I'll open this one and go to the attribute table. And again, we will do a calculation, but we have to add a field. So we go to add field and we add the calculation, which is area underscore square kilometers or area. Was it square kilometers or was it kilometers? Area kilometers. And this is this is the new one. It's really fun. Well, I'm following along. Thing is, he yeah, it's all instructions. But the thing is, he asks you to figure out how to estimate square kilometers. And when I asked ChatGPT, it gave me something that was uh, full. Um, decimal place different than his results. And then I checked with chat and chat insists that chat is right and the professor's wrong. So I'm not sure who's right. All right, so with this uh, float in here and then saving that, we can do the same thing. And now right click and say calculate field, area kilometers and do count times and then 0 0.09 if we're using the professor's logic. And I then. I don't know why he hit the check because I okay. know he has some wrong stuff in this. Yeah, there's occasionally there's wrong stuff. So I, I mean, we'll see because when I go to this one here and I go chart type, create chart, create a bar chart, and then select the category being land type and then it would be done by select area kilometers and I don't going to do some and then do the labels label the bars that one there is slightly less wetland and urban in 10 years if we look at the difference between this one here where urban was 849,000 
and then this where it's 939,000, it obviously the urban has grown, as has the barren from 21,000 to 25,000, and agriculture has also gone up. So this is valuable here to be able to flip through. I like this. I just have to now do it for each of the each of the maps. So it's just that same procedure, and it's good to repeat it several times so it gets in your head. You open the attribute table, you go to add a field, you make the field the um, area. I think it's is it kilometers or square kilometers? I gotta check that one. Area, area kilometers. Well, it, he says to do area kilometers. You know, but when you when you look at it says area underscore kilometer. That's what what he's doing. It might be. It says area underscore kilometers by land cover. Yeah. Well, that's what he says to do. Yeah. I know, and that's what I've been arguing with ChatGPT. But sometimes, simple, it's very simple, it's simple, it's simple, so simple, simple geometry. All right, so Luke 96, and now Luke 06, we have, and we have to right click and we say calculate field, and we are going to put count multiplied by. And then 0.009, I think it was. I mean, I can easily just paste in what I had. Yeah, 0 0.009. And then apply that. And then go to the... No, one second, one second. I'm going to finish the next one. Luco 6. Luco 6, hold on, hold on, hold on. Luco 6, properties, attribute table, create chart, create a bar chart. One more to do after this because there's four of them. Land type, go to sum and select area kilometers, apply and put in the data labels. And we got one more to do. And that is Luke 10. And we right click and we go to the attribute table. And we add a field and we make that field to be the area underscore km. Make it into a float so we get decimals and close it. Save it. Now go into our area kilometers, right click, calculate field, say count, or actually just paste in what we kept in the buffer for that, say apply, and then say OK, and then go in here and make another chart. Make that chart category or land type sum and then select area apply to data labels. And then you can clearly see if we get rid of the, we don't have to look at the attribute tables anymore. We have 1996, let's get rid of this attribute table. We have each of these going from there, looking at the urban area in particular, it goes from 849,939, and then five years later, it's at 964. That's not right. Something must be wrong in that attribute table. So what was our field calculation there? It was count times... Something's wrong with this data set. Um, it is the same amount, but... It's really messed up. Why is that? Did I not do float on this? Maybe I didn't do float. That could be the problem. So let's take a look at the at, oops. Let's take a look at the attribute table. If we go to, uh, we have to edit the attribute table somehow, which means to go to. How do you edit the attribute table? Edit the attribute table. Edit the attribute table. How do I edit the attribute table? If I go to, this is Luke who? Luke 6. Luke 6's attribute table. What's going on with Luke 6's attribute table? Edit metadata, maybe? No. Uh, edit data design, maybe? Edit the fields. Let's try that. 
Yes, it is float. So that's okay. So something funky is in this data because it's doing fine. But it's not giving stuff in thousands. I don't know why. Maybe it just worked that way because when you look at this one here, it's 900, 2274 point blah blah blah. And when you look at this one here, it's just 2248. Nonetheless, from 939 to 964, starting at 849, whatever, it's working. Maybe the area kilometer, no, I can't, I can't begin to ask why it's not showing those. But when you see it going up here, urban's 1,175, whereas here it's 964. So a clear trend of urban growing, growing, growing in there. And then he says to for time series analysis. So in addition to the two years, you can analyze the trend in a time series of four years. Right click on 96 and click join and relate, add join, and then join it based on the value field and click OK. So we will go and do as they say, we'll go to 96, right click on it and do joins and relates, and do an add join, and then the input join field is value, join table is loop. 2001 and also value and then so land cover loop 01 loop 96 land cover validate join and then repeat the same procedure to join 96 with two land cover rasters the other two and then you open the attribute table of 96 and you'll see them all appended okay that'll be interesting so if we go to here and we have to keep doing it, validate join. All right. So what? Then you do that and then you do it. And then you got to do it again. Join and relate and do an add join and take that and put in Luke 96, 96, 901. That's all there. The input join field is always the value, right? So I don't see value. Oh, there's value for 96. And then the join table this time is going to be, we did 01, so now we're going to do 06. And we're going to add that. And then we're going to do it again. Add a join. And our join field will be the loop 96 value. The join table that we're going to do is loop 10. And then do that. All right. So those charts are really messed up. At least the loop chart no longer comes up. Um, so he then says to look at it, and you should have all these VAT things, but repeat to join with the other two. If you're joining all of them, open the attribute table of look 96. You'll see them appended. Click export in the right top corner. Okay, so we go to the attribute table for look. We see all these other things added to it. And then we right click and say, nope, not from there. Right click from here. Nope, not from there. Right click from here. I don't know where we right click from. We got it open and then we go to click export in the menu in the top right corner. Ah, maybe it's these three hamburger buns they call them. So go from here yeah, and export. It's not a right click. And then export it and what do we call it? Do you want us to call it anything? Export to a text file joined look suffix is not text but comma, comma separated values CSV and then the time series is stored in the CSV file. 
Okay. Export table. Export table. And then make it into here. You want us to call it this, like this, so the CSV. Parameter missing or invalid. Why? Join the look. So something went wrong there. What went wrong? I did that. Joined look CSV. I should have been right. Note the suffix of CSV, not text. Note, navigate to the look folder and export it. Hmm. Output location. He's got lab three. This is lab four. So there's another error in there. But um, this one doesn't even have a way to we go into the lab four and then we call the name joined look CSV, save it, say OK. Ah, oh, that one worked. All right, so now we have some tables somewhere in there and we then create a bar chart to show the time series of the seven land types and farmers. You can choose any tools to create it. I um, want to use LibreCalc or Excel. Ah, so these questions here. All right, well, somewhere in this folder we have a CSV, and somewhere in this folder is in data D, in ArcGIS, in GIS Labs data, in Lab 4. And somewhere here we have the joined calc. And I open it up and I have this spreadsheet. And I can say cancel it. Alright, so there's the whole joined thing. Although this is that. And then you have to create a chart. So to create a chart for that. Insert chart, column chart. Can do that and make the lines bigger. Simply. And he wants it to look like that. That's not the same data set. And he wants us to label it. So you're gonna to have to learn how to how to make this work. Data range, data series, rows, data series and columns. First row is label, first column is label. Data series, chart elements, and then you have to show that. And that is not what we want because that doesn't show the labels. So how do I get rid of that? I can just undo. I can't undo. Uh, maybe I can. There, delete that. So really, what you want to do is take the land type and the area in kilometers and then the land type and the area in kilometers and then the land type and the area in kilometers and then the land type and the area in kilometers and then make a chart out of that and finish it up and we see then that we have urban growing year after year and we have agriculture going down and grassland going down and then up, uh, sorry, down, uh, up, and then forest going way down, and then water sort of staying the same, and then barren land going up and wetlands going down. So yay, that's, ain't that pretty? So that's the area in kilometers and then the land type in the area. I don't know what, why these legends are doing that. Because the colors are really messed up. So anyway, uh, we can work on that later on.
that's the exercise that they want done, and calculate the annual urban growth rate and deforestation rate during three periods, and then fill in the following table. So calculating the annual urban growth rate, this is for people who off the cuff understand how to use spreadsheets and calculate rates. These are economist types that are really good at that. Um, but kilometers squared per year, the growth rate would be just the number of difference. So you would go to the urban growth rate from 1996. A rate is a sort of um, calculus thing. So you know what? This is where I once again turn to chat GPT and I say, I say, I chat, I have to calculate the annual how would you go about using the data in a spreadsheet. And it's going to tell us <coughs> You need the area in kilometers, of course, for each year. Set up the table, urban area, forest area, change in urban area. So it's the change in that we need. Calculate the change in area. That's just a subtraction. Forest area, then to get the rate, to find the change in area. Urban growth rate is urban change number of years in period. Calculate the average area. So. We have the spreadsheet, so we want, we want us to make an urban change, a forest change, and a growth rate and deforestation rate. So we come into our spreadsheet here, and let's move this thing out of the way. And I can always recalculate, I'll leave it there. So we need to have then, and how did it put it? We want to have an urban growth and an urban change, forest change. We'll do that first. So, urban change, and then we want forest change, and then we want the growth rate. Urban growth rate, and we also want a forest growth rate, deforestation rate. I never thought I'd be back doing word problems. Deforestation growth rate in kilometers per year. Same thing with deforestation, deforestation rate, urban growth rate in kilometers per year. And this should be it's all kilometers squared, of course. This is all kilometers squared. Forest change in km squared, which is usually carrot two, and then forest change km. Squared and then urban growth rate kilometers squared per year and deforestation rate make that bigger and then deforestation growth rate kilometers squared per year all right so the urban change I mean, the thing is, you have to do every single year. So really, we need urban change, not total, but we need it for every year, right? So there's the years to go down like this. Oh, so we, we really have to start a separate spreadsheet for this. Or that's dumb what I just did. And then transfer this. So really, what we would do is add a sheet to this 
and then set it up as chat has set it up here. We would set it up year and then urban area. So let's do that. Let's say year, urban area, forest area, and then I'm going to put 1996, and then 2001, and then 2006, and then 2010, and then the urban area, the forest area, and then I already put in here urban change, so I should be able to just copy and paste that. But there's urban area, forest area, urban change, forest change. So urban area, forest area, urban change, that's in kilometers squared, and then forest change, and then that's in kilometers squared. And then the urban change rate is what's here, forest change rate and the urban change rate. So forest change, urban growth rate. Maybe I can take both of these at the same time. Save myself a sec. All right, then the urban area that we get from here, okay, we're just taking urban area for this first year. This is, doesn't say, but I think this is 1996. It's probably, I probably did it correct in, in laying these things out, but it doesn't tell us what year it is. Value count and landscape. What is that? Uh, let me pause. So I guess we'll take the area of square kilometers of urban and copy that for the first one. Let me actually see that this is increasing constantly. So if you look at it, then these are the right the right counts. Somehow it looks off, but you're going from 939. Oh, yeah, this is a mess. Hmm. Because it doesn't go down. The urban never goes down. So how could it go from 107, 101, and then to 964? So somehow this data table is a bit off. So I'm not going to save this. I'm going to redo from my GIS. So what do we have here? We have 96 has it there. And so does, then 2001 has a count, and then 2001 has a area square kilometers, and then it has a count, and then it has an area square kilometers, and then it has a count and an area square kilometers. So it's the area in square kilometers that we want when we write we clicked on this and we said export and we told it to send it to an output table we should have said the fields that we wanted and we only really want the area square kilometers and land type and then i guess there's several of these so this one was land type and area square kilometers for luke 96 huh Fields, merge rule, count. So we got all these different land types near kilometers. You think there'd be this one, this one, okay, then this one and this one, and then this one and this one. But that's only three output fields. That's weird. Say area square kilometers. I don't know. Let's see what that does. And look at it in the folder here. Okay, 
came in as an XML. Let's get this one joined. Let's see what I got here. Standard count land type. This is the old one. But I can do that too. If I take the old one, let me just see something here. If I take this old one and I say I do want the area square kilometers, I really don't care about this. I don't care about this. I don't care about this. I can actually get rid of these. I don't care about this or this. I can get rid of those. I don't care about this or this. I can get rid of those. And I don't care about this and this. I can get rid of those. But that's only one, two, three, so four. Okay. This is the weird one that doesn't have any decimals behind it. Um, it'd be nice if I could just get rid of, just truncate out all these so that I'm not, so that my graphs are much nicer to look at. So I'm going to get rid of that. And yes, you can tell me there's a way to recalculate that and reformat it. And I'm sure you're right. And I'm just lazy right now. Although, laziness would be developing an automated way to do it. So yeah, I guess I could come into here and I could say that I want this format to be... Uh, this format numbers to be general. No, I want to do it without any... To decimal places, so I'll put zero decimal places and then put it as a general number and see if that, yeah, no, I didn't do a darn thing. So there is a way to do it, and I'm sure that I was just on it and I'm not thinking straight, but make it simple, put in the labor. Then I just, it's driving me nuts. So what if I, oh, if I were to take this and this and say format cells, can I then get into something general where I'm going to a number that is just general? So what is the... That would be that. This tells me it would be that. So this should get rid of it. Oh, it did get rid of it. Okay, so that, that's the automatic way. All right, so this one is for area kilometer 96. This is area kilometer in 2001. This is area kilometer 2000. Six, and this is area kilometer 2010. All right, let me save this. Save as joined loc area underscore kilometer. And now that I have that, then if I go to my graph and I tell it, ah, wait a minute, I tell it that I want this area kilometer with this land type, I want this one and this one, I want this one and this one, and I want this one and this one, and then I graph it, I get a finish that says that the urban is going up. The agriculture is going up, so, um, and then the um, grassland and the forest is going way down, and the water is going down, and the barren is slightly going up. So that's that chart there. And then when I make my separate chart, what are you making these charts for? Like video? Yeah. No, this is for your your class. Do we have to make a chart? Mm-hmm. Yes, sure do. Uh, what? Yeah, you do. Oh. Uh, that's what I'm trying to do here. And now, you yeah, you got an Excel sheet. Doing in the yeah, and then I'm going to take these. Why are you making charts for this one? Because I want to do it quicker. I don't have all night to do this. Are um, you going to print it tonight? I don't 
Oh, maybe. I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty close. Yeah. All right. So, oops, that went the wrong way. How do you make it go across here? If you go like this, and it paste special paste. Actually, paste not that. Well, I can just go and do this. Paste that. Paste that. Paste that. In real spreadsheet, people are going, you idiot. You're just, there's like something you can do, just flip the axes or something. And I'm sitting here doing it all manually because it's been too long since I've made a spreadsheet and I never wanted to be an accountant anyway. So 1996 and 2001, 2006, and 2010. And then I have to go back to my other sheet and say, all right, so this area for urban has to go into 1996. And this one for 2001. And then this one for 2006. And then this one for 2010. Look at this poked in everywhere. Take this and go for 2010. That's the urban area. And you can see the changes. And then the forest area is do, 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 there's forest. Let me take that. No, you're not gonna make me pause until I get these forest areas in. Ah, I get the forest areas in first. And then this and go to here and then go to here and go to wait, 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 wait. go to here. I love how spreadsheets make you think in different dimensions. I mean really it is good to do spreadsheets, to do QGIS, GIS, to do Blender. You really begin to learn stuff. So let me save this and then I will pause. Okay, so continuing on, urban change is the uh, distance between one year and another. So between 1996, uh, yeah, so the weird thing is, is are we going to do this table to show urban change? There's nothing there. So the first year from 96 to 96, there's nothing here. They're suggesting there was a change in 20. So that's how they're doing it, and they're creating a total. That's kind of weird. So, but it's I guess that's how they want to they want to do it. Um, so you would say in we would say in this spreadsheet that the urban change here would be this cell. So we go equals this cell minus this cell, and that's 89. And then this next change is, and that wouldn't even be there. I'm sorry, that should have gone down to here. So that's that cell plus that cell. Then this one here, we should be able to just drag these down because then it's really, in terms of the formula, B3 minus B2. This is not right. Okay, that didn't work. B3 minus B, oh shoot. Ah. All right, that's bad. So equals, uh, come on, stop. So this one is equals this minus this. And then this one is equals B4 minus B3. And then this one is B5 minus B4. Oops, I keep doing that. I shouldn't click out there and then say enter. Um, and then the forest change is the same thing, but moved over. This is this one moved over. And this is this one moved over. So the forest is actually growing? No. Here the urban area is growing. Here the forest is diminishing. So you're getting less and less. And then the growth rate, save this. The growth rate is 
looking at <clears throat> I need a total thing. The average is the total urban area change uh, over the number of years. So it's over the total number of years. So that's totals. So if we go back to here. Are you uh, putting it also with yeah. Total. And then we have a total change here of how do you calculate totals here? Uh, is it added together? Chat is helping me. But isn't it also oh, instructions? No, the instructions don't give you any instructions at all here. So the total urban urban area in the beginning of the period. The total change, of course, is 80 in this example because they're using the total change between 100 and 180. So that's all we need to put into this part of the spreadsheet. So we say that the total equals the amount that there is in 2010 minus the amount that there was in the beginning. So it's 325 is the total amount of change, the total of urban change. And the forest change the same thing. It equals the total amount that there was in 2010 minus the amount that there was in 1996. So they've lost 456 square kilometers of forest. But I think it should be the opposite. You're doing just with the, the city minus city. Yeah, you'd lost, no, lost, 456 be kilometers minus. have been lost, yeah. yeah but, but the urban has grown by 325. Yeah, square so kilometers. So then the urban growth growth rate is when you take the the growth rate the for urban growth rate is urban change total divided by the number of years in the period. Mm -hmm. So here it's five years, here it's six years and six years. So I have to put that rate. Wait a minute. So if I go to those and I say that in the first year the growth rate kilometers per year um, I would do total and here they say that the urban growth where's the five it's come from years. five from six six and then there's an average they're doing from 1996 to 2004 years right yeah so they're they're saying 120 divided by four years, that's not five. So the change, it's the change. So it's 20 divided by four years equals five. That's why they're doing that. So we're going to go, uh, the change is this change. So it equals this change divided by four, divided by four years. Change. Yeah, it's over the it's a growth rate, kilometers change per year. Did you do the change? Yeah. So here it equals the urban change this year divided by how many years is in between here and here. It's five years, not four. Now that was five too. What did I do here? Oops. Is it 2001 or 2000? Uh, no, it's 1996. 96 and then the other one is 2000? Or? 2001. So that's five years. Why in chat has two well, Chat is, is, is using a different thing than I am. Chat's just giving an example that I have to follow. So this is this figure of change divided by four years, five years, by five years. And this one is this figure here divided by uh, four years. And then there's an average. I have to do the same thing here, but I can just drag this over. Do the same thing. So that then deforestation rate is that. And deforestation. How do you know? Go go in one of these cells. Because you can see it, E5 divided by four. So the years are the same. This one is, ah, damn it. Ah, stop. Yikes. I hate when that happens. Divided by four. Ah, I didn't mean to do that. 
I think what you have to do is you have to just hit enter, right? So yes, this one here is that. This one here is that, divided by five years. What is the last one, 36? Negative 36. So the rate Can is... Can you put on it? So that is the rate uh, over that period of time. And then, and then you put in the average growth rate. And the average rate is the total area change divided by the total number of years. So the total area change is that total there. Right. So you go and you say that it is equals this total change divided by the number of years, which is 14 years. It's the number of years? Yeah. It's the average rate of change. What is that 14 years? Uh, 2010 minus 1996. Yeah. All right. So the average rate of change is. I have to put average after that. That's not going to be good. Average rate of change over that time period. Average. Okay, it's uh, not going to. Really... We have to put a note. Go yeah. back. You gotta put a, a column between the yeah. insert to the left. No, I didn't mean insert a column. To the left. Okay. Average. 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 All right. So that's what those calculations are. And then you go back to the exercise and it says do that. Oh, he did it different. He wants to fill in the table. Well, we have, anyway, we have a way to fill in that table. We have the urban growth rate, we have the deforestation rate for that time, and that's our averages. Because it's almost done. Okay, so that's it for tonight. We will get then. We're going to go to the transition matrix next, and that's in our next tutorial as we blunder our way through learning. This one.